Hey yo, welcome to Paint It Plastic People. My name is Charles and I help aspiring and beginner miniature painters learn to save time and money by teaching them to paint fast and effective. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a really awesome trick. It's called dry brushing, so let's get to it. What is dry brushing? Well, it's this really awesome technique that you can learn right away. I personally think it's one of the first actual like miniature painting techniques that you should learn right out of the gate because it's so easy to do, you can apply it on basically any miniature you want. You can do a variety of different effects. It's really awesome. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your brush. Now there's a couple of different types of brushes you can use and we'll get into that later on in this video. You're gonna get that brush just with a little bit of paint on the end of it. You're gonna take it and you're gonna wipe most of it off with a paper towel. Basically you're gonna get it down to it's just a little bit of paint on it. You can test it out on the paper towel or on like the back of your thumb or something. And you just want barely any paint showing up there. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it over to your miniature and you're just gonna lightly dust the top edges of the miniature. And so what'll happen is you basically will do some highlights with it without having to actually sit down and manually do the highlights. What's really cool about this is that it can save you a ton of time. It can give you a really cool looking effects. So you can use it in a variety of different ways and you can use it with any sort of paint as well. The only drawback with dry brushing is that it kind of leaves a dusty effect no matter what you do. So that's the real big thing to consider when you go to do dry brushing is, do I kind of want to use that dusty effect or is that fine with my miniature? You know, it, it's something to weigh against it. Before you actually start to dry brush, it's something to consider whether you're going to go for that dusty effect if you're fine with it, if it suits what you're going for, or if you're just gonna do it just because you wanna save yourself some time, you wanna get your miniature to the table, which is what I like to do. <laughs> so there's two main brush types that you can go with. Really there's three, but the third one kinda stinks, and that's using just an old brush. You can use an old brush if it's kinda frayed out and looks like junk, it looks like the top of Beaker's head, <laughs> you know. If it's something like that, you can use that. It will get the job done, but ideally you would want to go for one of the other two options. The first being a chisel brush or a flat top brush. These little things are great. You usually get one in like, if you buy bulk packs of brushes at like your local craft store, you'll usually get one of those in there, whether it be like a big wide one or just like a little tiny narrow one, but they will get the job done. There's nothing wrong with them. And you know, lots of people use them and prefer them. I've used one for years, so there's nothing wrong with it. It gets results. Though lately I've been uh, put on to using makeup brushes. Makeup brushes are a lot more springy. Their um, bristles are very loose. You know, that's ideal for what you want to do when you're doing dry brushing. They're also pretty cheap. You can usually get one for about two, three dollars. That's here in Canada. I actually bought a pack of 10 from my local drugstore for about $16. It was pretty good. So you do have those kind of options. You could also go the route of, you know, if you have a significant other that wears makeup and has like extra makeup brushes just lying around that they're not using anymore. You obviously don't want to take one of their fresh ones. That would be bad. You'd be in some hot water then, but you can go that route if you want, if you're feeling brave. <laughs> um, but you, if you are someone that does use makeup, then you already have access to makeup brushes there. So if you have an old crummy one that you want to use for dry brushing, you have at her. You might have just saved yourself a couple bucks. One thing to be mindful of is your angles when you're dry brushing. You don't want to put your bristles going into the grooves, into the cracks and the crevices of your miniature. That's kind of defeating the purpose because chances are, and most often, you're going to be dry brushing after you've washed and shaded your miniatures. You don't want the bristles to go into the grooves because then you'll be putting paint into the grooves and you're gonna have to reapply or wash or shade. Instead, you want it to just hit the tops. So you gotta watch out. For instance, if you took my hand, for instance, and you were gonna dry brush, you wouldn't dry brush up and down because then the bristles would go in between. You would want to dry brush side to side. That way the bristles just touch the edges and they don't actually fall into the grooves. This is what you want to do when you're dry brushing. You don't want to go into those grooves because that will just be counterproductive to why you are doing this. So something really cool you can do when you dry brush is you can actually do highlights like you would normally do by hand. 
What I mean is you can do a regular dry brush across your miniature, then you can mix in a little bit of a brighter color into it, and then dry brush that on, but do it how you would do a highlight so you cover less of an area, and do that as you go up until your brightest highlights are at the top of your miniature. That's something really cool you can do, it's something to consider, something to maybe experiment with. Oh, hello. I thought uh, you should probably uh, hit the like button if you're enjoying this video or if it's helping you out any. And uh, maybe stick around because the next clip I'm going to show you actually has a preview for the next video I'm doing next week, so stay tuned for that. Another cool thing you can do is you can actually dry brush metallics onto your miniatures. So if you have like something like a very intricate metallic design on your miniature, or you have like a bunch of chain mail with a bunch of like little rings that you need to highlight up or something like that, some sort of intricate design or weapon or what have you, you can dry brush your metallics on. And the cool thing about dry brushing metallics back on is that unlike regular paints, they actually don't leave a dry effect because it's just the metallics going on. There's no real dry look to them. So they're really, it's prime real estate <laughs> for dry brushing whenever you needed to highlight metallics. And that's fake account number 100 subscribed. Oh, hello. Uh, if you want to stop me from making a bunch of fake channels, then you should probably subscribe yourself. If you want to keep me from having uh, uh, tons of conversations with myself down in the comment section, maybe leave a comment down below if this video helped you out at all or gave you some ideas. Or if you're excited for next week when I paint the Black Psycho Ranger from Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid Rise of the Psycho Rangers. And hey, maybe you want to share this video with your friends or family. That'd be really cool too. But most importantly, remember to get it to the table and have a good day.